Okay, so uh, welcome everyone uh, to live session one of design and analysis of VLSI subsystem. So this is an NPTEL course uh, offered by Professor Madhav Rao. And uh, this is a tutorial session. Uh, it will happen every week from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. according to Indian Standard Times. So uh, the idea of this session is uh, to solve numerical problems uh, on the topics, whatever that has been taught in the class. So uh, uh, the, the thing if you can come prepared by uh, watching the lectures uh, taught by Professor Madhav Rao uh, in the NPTEL. And uh, the idea over here is to solve numerical problems and also discussing uh, some of the interview questions which has been which will be uh, asked uh, in the VLSI interviews in the companies uh, which are related to this. Okay. And um, I'll be also discussing a couple of research topics um, whenever whatever topics which, which comes uh, uh, during the course duration. So uh, I am Kailash Prashad. I am a PhD scholar at Nano Electronics Device and Circuits Lab at Indian Institute of Technology, Gandhinagar. And uh, I'll be taking this session every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So this is your chance to uh, uh, discuss the kind of questions which arises during uh, your uh, during uh, your NPTEL lectures, and uh, you can uh, clear all the doubts. Uh, every Tuesday, what we will do, we will uh, solve some of the questions uh, which are asked uh, in uh, either interviews or uh, the previous year NPTEL assignment questions, such that your uh, 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 the understanding of the concepts uh, will be more clear. Okay, so uh, we will start. Okay, so a brief motivation uh, of why we want to do this. Obviously, Professor Madhav has already uh, motivated you guys, but let me motivate you again. Right, so this computing world is being dominated by uh, artificial intelligence application. If you name any company, they they are building their own hardware accelerator. We talk about six G communication, five G is already right now. Uh, we we talk about six G. Communication. We talk about autonomous driving, uh, self-driving cars. We talk about Internet of Things, right? Currently, um, billions and billions of devices are connected over cloud, and in future, this number is go gonna increase only. And we talk about data centers uh, of uh, Google, whatever uh, data that has been stored in your Google Drive, is actually stored somewhere. And uh, the other kind of electronic components you have is uh, like your uh, the MacBook you have, the laptop you have, you have iPad, mobile phone, smartwatches. So all of this uh, are uh, the, uh, the the electronics uh, components um, which you carry, right? But the underlying uh, uh, the physics behind that or the underlying chip behind uh, that is the one which is powering uh, all of these uh, electronic devices it is powering all this technology which i have mentioned right so uh, there will be this kind of chip which is available <laughs> which is powering all of this uh, advancement in the electronics industry when i talk about uh, say uh, a laptop Right, it will have either Intel's processor, it will have either AMD's processor, or now if you talk about the MacBook, Apple has it, its own processor, right? The M1 series it has. Similarly, if you talk about the data center, data centers stores uh, data, right? So th these are nothing but the memory blocks, uh, which is uh, which is. There will be processors which are associated with it. Along with that, when you talk about IOTs, every edge devices has a minimum, a very small processor which are associated with it, which are implemented uh, or built in it, in it, right? And to uh, uh, employ technology like AI, 6G communication, self-driving, uh, some some kind of chips which act as a controller for driving all of this uh, technology. So uh, all in all. This VLSI uh, domain uh, is uh, is behind every key advancement in the technology you can see in the, in the current scenario. Earlier, uh, maybe in uh, 30 or 40 days back, right, uh, 
the oil industry or uh, what you can say right the civil uh, the infrastructure industry was the forefront right if if any company has a very large infrastructure or they have the large oil they, that that uh, yeah that uh, country will be uh, termed as more powerful right the the scenario is changing over now right so the semiconductor is the new oil okay and uh, that's the reason uh, you should understand uh, the, the VLSI, the concepts in the VLSI and try to build your career in this particular domain. So uh, just a brief introduction uh, of uh, history of IC design. It all started uh, with a very uh, one silicon transistor, right, which was, which was actually designed in the Bell Labs in 1950s, right. And then uh, it has uh, moved progressively according to what we call as uh, uh, the, the famous law we talked about is Moore's law, right. At every 18 months, the number of transistors in the chips uh, doubles. And this law actually is not a physical law, right. It's it was a prediction by uh, the, the co-founder of Intel, the Gordon Moore, and something that the industry has done, right? They have taken this law very seriously, right? Uh, they 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 tried hard to improve their technologies in order to follow this particular uh, law. And what happened? Just to uh, make this law possible, the number of transistors has grown exponentially uh, over the years, right? If you talk about uh, the current uh, uh, laptop. Uh, the, the the chip in the current laptop there are billions and trillions of transistors okay so uh, it all started not only 70 years back right so it is not very old uh, a domain we are talking about so uh, the the initial uh, advancement in semiconductor has started only 70 years back right and you can see what kind of uh, impact it has provided in the society so so earlier what I have shown you is uh, advancement in processor. The second thing is along with any uh, processor, any device you take, right, you will have a processor, you will also have memory unit in it, right. So when I talk about memory, what kind of memory? We have caches, right, we have DRAMs, so the RAM module you talk about, we have solid state drives, right, then we have hard drives, okay. So we have hierarchy of memories which are available, so along with yeah so along with that uh, along with the processor memories uh, becomes a very key component in um, any uh, any electronic devices so similarly uh, if we see the graph of memory and this actually graph uh, only uh, talks and the solid state drive and you see from uh, 1947 where uh, the RAM was of very big size. You might have seen one of the pictures uh, from nine, uh, 1950s that the 5 MB memory, the 5 MB RAM was a size of a car, right? And now you talk about carrying uh, 3 terabyte or 4 terabyte in your inner pocket, right? So that's how uh, things have scaled down over last 50 to 60 years. So uh, I think I've seen one of the comments that it, this is the first class for him. So yeah, we are just uh, starting uh, the VLSI design course. I'm just motivating you guys how uh, things have progressed over the years, right? Before starting any of the course, you should understand its history, right? Why that particular course is very important and uh, where all it has started, okay? Now, uh, these are some of the recent chips, okay. Intel Nirvana is one of the uh, powerful chips from Intel. Then we have uh, one GPU, NVIDIA P100, again one of the powerful uh, chips from uh, NVIDIA. Then we talk about AMD, right. So AMD has uh, actually, um, Intel was a leader in the processor uh, domain uh, for quite some time. It's It's been, I think, from 30 to 40 years. Intel was the leader, but uh, from last five to six years, you have seen uh, the growth of AMD in the processor design. So this, these are some of the latest AMD, AMD Ryzen chips. So they have AMD Ryzen Threadripper, then they have um, uh, AMD uh, Ryzen Epic processors, right? And please note that all of these processors uh, or the memories which we are talking about contains millions, uh, not millions, billions of uh, transistors in it which are working to make uh, or make the, this, chip, this particular chip possible. So uh, 
just wanted to give you a brief uh, overview of what kind of companies which are involved in VLSI, right? So these are the, some of the top semiconductor manufacturing company in United States, right? So uh, Intel is obviously the biggest player. Then uh, we talk about uh, NVIDIA, Texas Instrument, Micron. Then we have analog devices, microchip, Skywork, Maxim Integrated, Xilinx, and again AMD, right? So uh, if you see, these are only handful of companies I have picked, but uh, you you should know that uh, there, there are uh, more than three, four hundred companies which are working in the semiconductor domain. Now, if we talk about some of the industry, some of the companies in India, right? So there, there is Sankhya Lab, then we have SM Technology, Chip Logic, uh, Broadcom, e -Info Chip, which is based in Gujarat itself. And um, we have our foundry, which is called as SCL. Right, and they have all, all, also their uh, design centers which are available. So, uh, why I'm showing this? Uh, that is one of the questions uh, I will answer after this slide. So, uh, the thing is, you might end up working with one of these companies, whatever, whatever I have uh, shown you, right? And after uh, doing this course of the VLSI design and couple of more courses, you'll be applying for any one of these companies, right? So uh, the third category of company is what we call as EDA companies. So earlier companies which I have shown, they design chips, okay? Uh, these are the companies which provide softwares uh, in which we design the chip, okay? So uh, if we talk about, I want to design, say, uh, memory, okay? If I want to design a processor, how will you design? You have to write a very low code, right? Then uh, you have to pass through several stages uh, of uh, 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 the IC design and then the final layout will come and that will be sent to the foundry, right? So whatever I have said, right, it is called as a fabrication flow, the RDA to GDS flow, right? And every step has to be done in some kind of software. And these softwares are being provided by uh, the three big players. One is Cadence, the second one is Synopsys, and the third one is uh, Mental Graphics. It has been actually acquired by Siemens ADA. So this is one of the companies, Siemens ADA. They have acquired the mental graphics. Uh, so, uh, and we have various other companies like ANSYS, Keysight, and Xilinx, right? So, Xilinx uh, is one of the biggest company in FPGA domain. Uh, whatever terms I have used, you might not be familiar with uh, this right now, but I am pretty sure that at the end of the course, uh, you will be uh, uh, familiar with all the terms which I am currently talking about. And you will understand what is the role of each of these companies and uh, what they do, okay? And this is a list of uh, <coughs> companies which actually works in a semiconductor domain. And you can see, right, virtually every company you name, they have their semiconductor division uh, for them, right? And the prominent one are Google, Microsoft, and Facebook, right? They have their own hardware accelerator design team. Please understand that. So, uh, also, those who are uh, currently in India and they want to uh, build your, your career in uh, VLSI uh, domain, please know there's a very uh, big presence in design and verification uh, in India. Okay, so we have all the large design and verification company uh, in India like Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, and will you name any company? they have their a couple of centers in India, right? Not only one, they will have uh, their centers in Bangalore, Pune, and then they will have in uh, Hyderabad and uh, the Noida Electronic City. Uh, but apart from that, uh, what is happening uh, from last two to three years that uh, government of India has been pushing hard for fabrication facility, right? So this is one of the domain where uh, India lags behind. We do not have uh, the state of the art fabrication facility. So if you want to design a chip, what you have to do is you design everything uh, using all the softwares and all, but for the, for the final fabrication where it will be converted into chip, you have to send to somewhere, okay? Either you have to send to TSMC, which is based on Taiwan, or you have to send to UMC based on Europe and uh, or uh, Intel found, Intel has now their own foundry. So any of these companies will fabricate for you and then you will get back the chip. So India is trying hard to, uh, uh, build their own fabrication facility and the first uh, fabrication facility will be set in uh, Gujarat, right? So you might know the announcement from government of India. Uh, and this uh, uh, this is actually uh, been done by a company that is called as Vedanta, right? And they have collaborated with Foxconn. Apart from that, there are various companies like Estam and MRM Group. 
and uh, recently I've heard the news. Uh, these are this is a very new news. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, Micron is uh, setting their setting their fabrication facility in the Gujarat. Okay, so uh, in next five to ten years, right, um, the India the the semiconductor ecosystem in India will grow exponentially. So uh, this is a motivation for you guys if you are in uh, semiconductor field or if you are aspiring to be in semiconductor field, this is the right time to do so. Okay. So uh, then I will move to the course layout. If you have any question for now, uh, please ask. Right, and please note that this is a live interaction session. Okay, this is not like an NPT lecture. You can ask any questions over here. Uh, you can type in the chat box if you wish. <laughs> okay, so uh, there, there are no questions. Uh, I think uh, you might uh, know the information. So, uh, any help for my first class? Okay, Sumant, I am not understanding your question. Can you uh, just tell me what you want to say? Unmute yourself and. So I, I think if I understand your question correctly, uh, what what uh, we'll be doing next is what that will help you in your first class. Okay, so uh, don't worry about that. We'll be solving a couple of questions based on uh, uh, whatever that is being taught taught by. Okay, no worries as such. Uh, the thing is, what you have to do, you have to go to the NPTEL, okay, and uh, you have to uh, watch the videos which has been provided by uh, the NPTEL website. It is available. If you have registered for course, this is well and good, right? You will be anyway doing that. If you are not registered for the course, even though you can go, you can watch uh, the the video lectures, okay. So that the course name is Design and Analysis of VLSI Subsystem. And uh, it will be it is in be taught by uh, Professor Madhav Rao. All the videos are already available. The slides are available. You can uh, go ahead with that. We uh, meet on this uh, uh, Thursday. Please make sure that you have covered the contents from uh, contents from uh, that that particular week. Okay, so that because this this particular session is majorly focused on uh, solving question rather than. Uh, rather than teaching the course, right? So the teaching is being done by Professor Madhav Rao. Okay, Archu Kumar has a very interesting question. What is the future of VLSI engineer is India, right? The future, so a short answer is future is very bright. Okay, so uh, the thing is, we have all the, as I've already mentioned, right? All the design houses uh, in the India. When I talk about design houses, uh, I talk about, uh, Intel, NXP, IBM, then uh, AMD, Qualcomm, then uh, the Xilinx, I think Xilinx has been combined with AMD and uh, all the companies you name. Then we have the memory design uh, companies like Micron, SK Hynix and then uh, third one is uh, the, the Sand. So again, the other kind of memory de de design companies like Western Digital, SanDisk and all, right? And uh, there are other sets of company which work on uh, communication uh, like Broadcom uh, and all and then there are companies like ST Microelectronics and all. So uh, we have a very large uh, pool of companies which are available in India, right? And uh, what you uh, uh, want to know is, okay, uh, how uh, my future will look like. So if I uh, just am truthful to you guys, then uh, the thing is, the future is very bright. There, there is a lot of hiring that is going on despite the recession which is already there, right? Many of the companies are hiring and firing. But the thing is, Indian semiconductor industry is uh, growing very hard, right? The thing we have is we do not have enough skilled engineers available in India, right? And this kind of courses are, uh, 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 are uh, uh, what we say, right? It's an uh, uh, initiative to make sure that uh, we have a lot of uh, trained uh, professionals in the VLSI domain. In the future, what will happen? Uh, we will have enough jobs, but uh, we don't will not have enough skilled people available. 
ओके सो इफ यू डू वी एल एस आई डिजाइन कोर्स If you do VLSI design course along with couple of more courses, I will suggest. Right, you can get into any of the companies, and uh, you can start your career. How this course is helpful for VLSI company placement? Okay, so the thing is, VLSI. Whenever you uh, talk about any company uh, uh, of the VLSI, the first uh, set of question they will be asking on the basics of VLSI, right? And this course will provide you the basics of VLSI. right when i talk about basics of vlsi okay how a transistor work right how does the cmos logic and uh, 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 cmos logic works right how you use cmos logic to design more complex logic right how does uh, the power optimization done how does the delay optimization is being done how do you design large combination circuit how do you design large sequential circuit then how do you design the packend so uh, i think one of the physical design engineer has been Has joined over here, right? So uh, whenever we talk about uh, the design, we talk about the front end of the design where you write a very long code or you design a schematic using a Cadence tool, right? So that's the front end part. But when you see the back end, you design the layouts and all, right? Uh, you can uh, use a custom tool to design the layout, uh, or you can design layout on your own. So uh, all of this in, uh, this skills will be actually taught in this particular course. right so in that way this this course become extremely important whenever you sit for any vlsi company whatever topics that will be covered from week 1 to week 12 right you can at, at least assume that uh, 50 to 60% of the questions will be from this particular course okay so in that regards uh, this course becomes extremely important now i have one more point what are the skills required apart from this to join the core companies okay so uh, the skills are uh, uh, you have to be very proficient in uh, so okay i will i will discuss that okay you will you have to be very proficient in any of the hardware description language okay so it can be either very log or system very log okay now uh, the second thing is uh, you should when when i talk about very proficient right you should build large uh, large modules like you you should implement uh, the the uh, networking protocols like spi i2c and all right using the very log and uh, please note that everything is available over internet you can go to uh, websites like chip verify verification guide there is a very uh, beautiful tutorials which are available you can pick one right and there are open source tool where you can do all kind of simulations and all second thing is if you can have the understanding of the entire rtl to gds flow okay so when i talk about uh, rtl to gds flow what do i mean okay so the first step of the rtl is what i call as very log or the system very log okay then uh, there are various steps which happens when i talk about uh, the entire rtl to gds flow right so uh, what you do you take this design you pass through a tool which is called a synthesis tool right so you should know that okay how uh, your design whatever you have written in very log or system very log will be converted into uh, using a synthesis tool some of the tools which are uh, proprietary from cadence and synopsis are genus and you know uh, sorry genus and design compiler okay so every industry will use one of these two tools okay design compiler then uh, after that uh, one of the very important thing is uh, what we call as timing okay so you should understand the timing and the timing will be taught actually so this is the week 11 right so static timing analysis you should understand after that so uh, you have to uh, do what we call as physical design of that particular uh, uh synthesize net list what you have when i talk about physical design it has various steps floor planning okay then placement then routing and then what we call as clock tree synthesis uh, it, it will happen actually before uh, routing clock tree synthesis okay then uh we talk about the final gds the layout generation so this is uh the final step and after every step right so whatever step i am talking about it, whether it is uh, synthesis whether it is timing closure whether it is physical design 
what you have to do you have to do verification okay so you write uh, test cases and you do extensive uh, detailed verification of the design whatever you are uh, designing right so that is correct both functionality wise and timing wise or not right so functional and timing verification so uh, and how do you learn this particular uh, thing so there are a couple of uh, tutorials available over uh, nptl right where uh, this 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 particular skill is being taught and this is actually called as digital ic design right the entire course is called as digital ic design I teach this course at here at IIT Gandhi Nagar. Um, there are not many institute which which teach this course, but uh, the thing is you can uh, uh, you can uh, go to YouTube and a uh, couple of channels are there where you can learn these skills. Right? Please understand if you know VLSI, then that RTL to GTS flow, it becomes very easier for you to crack any VLSI interview. I hope Arju, I have answered your question. okay and uh, can we create a whatsapp group? okay so i have already created a whatsapp group so i will be just sharing the link uh, at the end of this particular uh, tutorial okay any more questions feel free to ask any question we have two hours okay long time and uh, i think in the first uh, tutorial i'll be solving only five questions how to submit the assignment so Sumant, you have not registered for the course. So if you have registered for the course, uh, you you can submit in the NPTEL portal itself. Uh, if you have not registered for the course, you need not to submit any assignment, right? You just do for yourself. So that's how it is. What is the current technology? Okay. So, uh, okay, so I will just erase it. See, these are very uh, small questions, but uh, these are interesting questions. And uh, if you uh, ask this kind of question, it will help others also. So when I talk about technology, right, what do you mean by technology for a VLSI engineer, right? So because everything is technology and we, we do bachelors in technology, masters in technology. When I talk about technology uh, over here, so uh, the technology, over here is uh, is uh, actually defined in nanometer okay so uh, current technology if i talk about is 5 nanometer then we also have actually 4 nanometer uh, i think in the market okay earlier uh, the technology was 180 nanometer then uh, 130 nanometer right then uh, 90 nanometer and then it has uh, gone to 32 uh, slash 28 nanometer then uh, we have uh, 22 nanometer right and it has been reduced to 5 to 4 nanometer what do you mean by this uh, all this nanometer earlier uh, before say 45 nanometer this uh, nanometer was actually uh, the gate length okay gate length of the mosfet transistor you talk about nanometer uh, the gate length will be 90 right 180 nanometer the gate length will be 180 now if you talk about say 5 and 4 nanometer right so it is not the gate length um, also it is not actually the minimum feature size available so currently uh, what people are trying to do they are just keep on naming that right um, it has just been a but the thing is as you move down the technology the performance of so whatever chip you will make in 28 nanometer, if you make same chip in 7 nanometer, it will be more uh, faster, it will be more power efficient and it will take lesser area. Okay, so that's what uh, the technology means. Uh, if you talk about current technology, it is 5 nanometer and 4 nanometer and the transistor, the underlying transistor in that is actually called as pin pet. Okay, so just remember this term, maybe in any of the lecture it might we'll be discussing but not now finfet is the uh, transistor which we use it is a mosfet only uh, but a 3d kind of mosfet and when we talk about future okay so future is 3 nanometer and 2 nanometer and intel has actually uh, told it okay 18 armstrong 
So their uh, technology will be 18 Armstrong. That is 1.8 nanometer. This uh, technology will use uh, called as, uh, what we call as nano sheet pits. Okay, so uh, <coughs> so these are the different uh, architecture of uh, sorry different types of field effect transistor which are available. In this particular course, we will be discussing about only uh, the planar fits, what we call as planar uh, fit. Plus, but the thing is, you should understand that if you understand the underlying physics of uh, the planar fit, you will be able to easily understand the underlying physics of fin fit and nano sheet fit. Okay, so uh, okay, so Thea has asked a question that okay, how do you calculate uh, this technology five nanometer, four nanometer, and all? So uh, there was actually a formula. Okay, <laughs> earlier how this uh, from uh, ninety to sixty five has come. So let me explain you. So earlier, what what used to happen that when I talk about 180 nanometer, right? When I move to next technology node, there uh, is actually benefit of uh, area. So area is actually reduced by 50 percent, right? So if area is reduced by 50 percent, so what used to happen that uh, the the length and width actually uh, is been scaled by 0 0.7 and 0 0.7 right so if you multiply 0 0.7 and 0 0.7 0 0.7 into 0 0.7 this will come at 0.49 which is around 0.5 right so uh, so our scaling factor is 0 0.7 so the thing is if you move from 180 nanometer to the next technology node what you have to do you have to multiply this with 0 0.7 okay so this will be around 130 nanometer and then you multiply with 0 0.7 it will then multiply with 0.7, it will be around 63, right? So then the technology is 65, then 45. And similarly, the, we have 10 nanometer. If you multiply 10 with uh, 0.7, you will have 7 nanometer, okay? If you multiply 7 with 0.7, right, which is 0.49, uh, so, sorry, not 0.49, 4.9, that is 5 nanometer, okay? Then you multiply with 0.7, that will be 3 nanometer actually. But uh, what TSMC has done that, okay, because they have uh, shown improvement in their transistor, so they, they call that as a 4 nanometer, but ideally the next node should be 3 nanometer. <laughs> name is being defined. Okay, so 0 0.5, we do not uh, have 6.5 or 3.5 nanometer. We round it off to nearest integer, right? And the name has been defined uh, using this 0.7 scaling vector. Earlier, it was uh, true, every technology you move, the area reduction was 50%, but now this is not the case, but still uh, the companies follow this, this particular nomenclature. Uh, WhatsApp group link, I will share at the end, don't worry, Bunty. Is there any programming language needed to get into VLSI job? Okay, see, uh, when I talk about, or whenever you talk about programming language, so programming la programming is a fourth basic need of life, life for an uh, engineer, okay? You have roti, kapra, makan, right? So house, food, and uh, your uh, uh, clothes, right? So these are the three basic needs. The fourth basic need is, uh, is programming, okay? So you should know programming irrespective of the branch you have. And please understand in VLSI industry, uh, it is 90% uh, automation and 10% what you actually do, right? The full uh, flow, everything is automated and you should know at least uh, one or two programming languages. It can be anything. It, it can be C, C++, it can be Python, right? But uh, if you want to apply for a VLSI job along with the hardware description language, you should have a knowledge of uh, C, C, C++ or Python, okay? So that's uh, the question for you, Malaya. Now, Sangeeta has asked, what does it define? It doesn't define anything. Okay, so now the thing is, uh, 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 the nanometer is now, it's a marketing practice. Okay, so uh, generally uh, what we try to do, what technology uh, guys try to do, they try to have at least one of the feature size. It can be the uh, distance between the metal or anything too near to 5 nanometer. But the thing is, even in the 5 nanometer, the metal uh, distance is 7 nanometer or 6 nanometer. 
So ideally, it doesn't have any def definition. Uh, it is just showing that the technology is progressive. In the technology, you no know, different for analog and digital IC. Yes, uh, the technology remains the node remains the same, but the transistor which are used in analog uh, domain and the digital domains are different. Okay, the transistor which are required for analog domain are specifically optimized for analog performance, and uh, when the transistor which are designed for uh, digital circuits are specifically uh, optimized for digital performance. Now, uh, okay, I think that's all. <laughs> that's the question. If you have any more question, you can ask. Any more questions? Okay, there is a question, is this second or third week course? Okay, so see, uh, the in the NPTEL, uh, the course has been progressed to, I think, uh, second or third week, but this particular tutorial is for uh, the first week, right? The assignment deadline is on eight, right? So, uh, we'll be discussing a couple of questions uh, based on whatever that has been taught in the first week. Okay, so this is the very first tutorial yeah, in, uh, in that regards for you soon. Uh, guys, any more questions? Okay, so if you don't have any more questions, then I will proceed ahead. Okay. So, uh, this is the course layout. Uh, in the week one, so we are actually discussing CMOS transistors and current model. Professor Madhav Rao has discussed uh, this in the lecture, right? Then uh, we will proceed with uh, CMOS inverter and the characteristic, right? So first we discuss about the basic element of uh, our VLSI, that is the transistor, okay? Transistor is the unit cell, okay? So just like cells we have uh, in our body, that is the basic living unit. And similarly, for uh, VLSI, it, it is the transistor, okay? Then uh, we uh, design inverter, okay? Inverter uh, actually looks like this. If you are familiar with uh, the MOSFET symbol, so this is how an uh, inverter looks like, okay? So the thing is, uh, inverter is the smallest circuit you can design uh, using uh, in, in the CMOS, uh, digital CMOS circuit design, right? And if you understand inverter, with the greatest detail, you can understand any of the circuit in the uh, in the VLSI design. Okay, that's the reason inverter will be explicitly taught to you guys. I think it has already been taught in the lecture. You you might want to go and uh, try to understand it. But, but uh, the reason is uh, inverter actually forms the basic of all the uh, concept which will be used in VLSI, right? So if you understand inverter, you understand its characteristic, it will be extremely easy for you to understand any of the things uh, in the VLSI, okay? Then we'll be discussing about uh, noise margin and the delay of the inverter. Then we'll be discussing about delay, right? So why the delay is important? Uh, anyone wants to answer this question, right? Why do we talk about the delay of uh, whatever circuit we are designing? You can type. How does delay impact our uh, procedure? Okay. So, Sangeeta has answered uh, performance. Uh, anybody else want to comment on it? Okay. So uh, the answer is correct actually, right? So delay actually uh, is inversely proportional to the performance of uh, the digital circuit, whatever you design, right? That's the reason understanding delay becomes extremely important, right? Whenever you uh, learn the digital, basic digital circuit course, right? You actually don't go into detail uh, how every gate is working. Now in the VLSI, you will see how every gate is working and what kind of delay you will get with uh, uh, whatever gate you have, right? Now, uh, you'll be able to actually answer the question whether you, when you want to design a full adder, should I use NOR gates or should I use NAND gates? 
right? Currently, uh, you answered like that, okay, using one gate, the number of transistors will be more, the other gate, the number of transistors is less. In this way, you answer, but actually that is not totally uh, correct answer, right? Using uh, uh, that, uh, okay, so by calculating the exact delay, by calculating the exact power, you should be able to answer uh, this kind of question. And uh, while designing larger circuits, uh, this kind of questions, uh, are uh, actually designer asked to themselves, right? What kind of uh, circuit we use, and uh, the basics will be optimization, right? And using then after that we'll go to larger circuit, combinational circuit family. Then uh, we will uh, go to what we call a stick diagram and interconnects, right? So the stick diagram is actually used to make layouts, right? Uh, why I say so? because you you are seeing this uh, inverter right uh, and we are used to see this but the question is is this how actually the inverter looks like when it is actually fabricated in the chip the answer is no it is not how uh, the inverter looks like these are just symbols right so layout actually uh, shows that okay how the inverter will be actually laid out whenever you design a chip right what kind of metal wires has to be uh, um, uh, has to be uh, lined up, then what kind of doping you will use, right? Where you will uh, put the source and drain contact, where the body connection will be. Because this is a physical thing, right? And this symbol doesn't signify anything as such. So that will be actually taught while uh, discussing about stick diagram, interconnects, and the layout. Uh, interconnects is actually uh, these connections, right? Connections between two transistors, connection uh, between uh, multiple transistors and these are actually made using uh, metal wires okay so we will actually understand um, how these metal wires are uh, laid out right what are the properties of these uh, metal wires and how does this it impact our performance our power consumption of whatever circuit you design then we will discuss about the power itself after that we will be discussing the sequential circuit then the the most important topic will come uh, actually everything is important and uh, why i consider it as most important because uh, we do verification that okay if you provide zero it is coming one over here right if you provide one it is coming uh, zero over here this is called as functional verification okay you are checking the functionality there is another thing which is called as timing verification uh, we, I will not go into detail of that right now, but when you will um, go to week 11, you will appreciate that, okay, what do you mean by timing, right? The thing is, you cannot apply the signals at any time. If you apply the signals at any time, the things will, uh, things, things can go here, okay? So, there we will understand uh, the static timing analysis. We will see how do you design uh, a circuit such that there should not be any timing variations and what kind of timing variations are there okay then uh, we will use we will uh, use whatever uh, knowledge we have gathered over week 11 to design a larger subsystem like adder and then we will be discussing what we call as uh, approximate computing okay approximate computing is one of the paradigm which is used to design energy efficient system i will just uh, simply uh, give you an example of approximate computing So if you see this this particular uh, area, okay. So this particular area is uh, the color is what color it is? I think uh, it is yellowish. Okay. Now the thing is, how does this particular image is stored in uh, whatever system you have? So I will just give you an example. These are actually stored in matrices. Okay. So matrices like two fifty five or two forty five, just like this two thirty three. Okay, uh, it will be a matrix. So when you talk about uh, an image of 1920 in 2080, there will be a matrix which is of size 1920 in 2080, and each of the value will be from 0 to 255. Okay, so uh, this is when I talk about only black and white image. When I talk about colored image, it will have three such kind of matrix: one for red, another for green, the third one is for blue. Now the question is. Is if I remove or uh, make this 255 to 254, right? Will the color will change, right? 
the thing is that the visually you cannot uh, differentiate between uh, such such minor changes okay and uh, actually what you have done you have approximated whatever values you have right uh, so the thing is you use this property to design efficient hardware and this particular paradigm is called as approximate computing i'll be discussing a detail in whenever week 12 will come actually this is one of the topics i i uh, do research on approximate computing so uh, this is the course layout okay anyone has any questions in the course layout I'm waiting. Okay, so uh, some of the basic question and these are the question for you. Okay, because you, uh, yes, you already know the basics of things, right? Now, uh, okay, before proceeding ahead, uh, I just want to answer what is the current core research area in VLSI? Okay, there are humongous research area in VLSI. I can just tell you what our lab uh, expertises in uh, here at IIT Gandhi Nagar. So uh, we work in in-memory computing. Okay, in-memory computing. You may want to note down all of these things because in future you might hear a system which has in-memory computing module. We work on approximate computing. Okay. We work on radiation hardened designs, radiation hardened circuits. So we work on uh, designing AI hardware accelerators. We work on uh, various number systems, like one of the new number system we have is positive number systems. Okay. We work on uh, what we call as physical and colonial function. These are actually uh, some of the chips which are used in security. Okay, physical and colonial functions. There is asynchronous circuits. Okay. Then we uh, have uh, automatic analog design. That is again one of my core expertise. Automatic analog uh, design. Okay, so this is only one uh, of the domain. Okay, so this is when I talk about circuits. Then we have devices. Okay, so in devices, uh, our lab actually designed LD MOS. LD MOS is a high voltage transistor which are used in cars, uh, wherever high voltage is required, all the automotive application. Then I have actually mentioned one of the transistor, right? Nano sheets, which will come maybe uh, one year or two years. Right. Uh, our lab actually works on nano sheets, which are uh, latest transistor, which will come in three nanometer and all. Right. Then uh, <coughs> we work on reconfigurable transistors, reconfigurable FETs. Okay. There are various domain like using machine learning to design this transistor. Okay. After that, uh, we have architecture. Okay. Where what you do? You design systems, okay, for machine learning, systems for machine learning, okay. So uh, then uh, you design network on chip modules, okay. And there are many more, okay. So these are, these, uh, are the topics which our lab actually works on. And we have uh, what we call as emerging memories, emerging memories like our um, M RAM and all, okay, and uh, and please note that this is not uh, this is not uh, more than one percent of the research topics which people are working on, okay. So there will be ninety nine percent more uh, topics which are available in in VLSI, okay. So if you are very good at uh, VLSI and uh, have very good credential, you may want to apply here at IIT Gandhi Nagar. And uh, all the other IITs also uh, work on this kind of uh, this kind of interesting topics, right? Which will be coming maybe in uh, next uh, three years, four years, five years, like that. So, Sangeeta, uh, did I answer your question? I think. Okay. 
So you may want to take a snap of this, okay? If you want to pursue any of this field, it will be helpful for you. Okay, so now coming back to uh, what we are here for, that is solving questions, okay? We had enough discussion regarding technology, enough discussion regarding VSI, what kind of companies we have, what is the future of semiconductors uh, here, right? And what do we work on? Uh, what are the research areas which are available? But uh, if I just uh, summarize, or uh, the thing is, uh, what is the basic thing which is required for all of this thing is the basics of VSI, right? And this, this course will teach uh, you that, the basics of the VSI. Now the question is, uh, can anybody explain me how a MOSFET works, right? So uh, what is the basic operating principle of a MOSFET? Anyone? Student, you can unmute yourself and uh, please explain me, right? I, I expect this kind of question uh, you may be able to answer. Uh, can you tell me what do you, uh, what is the basic MOSFET? Anyone? Metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, sir. Okay. And uh, do you want to actually? Yeah. Actually, if you are applying the voltage at the gate terminal, uh, that will create the channel between the source and drain. So after that, we have to apply the uh, VDS voltage that is uh, between the drain and source. Uh, that will make the charge carriers to flow from source to drain. There the conventional current will flow from drain to source. Thank you. Uh, excellent explanation. I will again uh, explain what uh, uh, she shared. Is, uh, so here is a small diagram of a MOSFET. Okay. So this is my gate. So here is the oxide. Right. And uh, this is my source. This is my drain. Okay. And this is my bulk, my body. Okay, so how does the MOSFET work? What you do? Uh, suppose I consider this as an N MOS. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm extremely sorry, I was muted. So uh, I will just repeat again what I was saying that okay, uh, this is uh, the this is the MOSFET uh, we have. Okay, which has a gate, source, and drain. And uh, there is an oxide, okay? So here, this metal oxide, and this is semiconductor, okay? From here, the name comes, metal oxide semiconductor, okay? So whenever you apply a positive voltage over here, positive voltage, okay? And I am considering this as NMOS, okay? So in, in case of NMOS, this will be of N plus type, and this will be also N plus type, okay? This will be P type. Okay. As you apply uh, this gate voltage, there will be electrons coming over here, okay? very large amount of electrons coming over here. And uh, after that, uh, if you apply, uh, say, uh, source is grounded, zero, okay? body is also grounded, zero, and you apply VDD over here, and I applied uh, gate also VDD. So what will happen? An electric field will, create it, will be created between source and drain, and the current will start uh, flowing. Okay, so uh, electrons will move to drain uh, because uh, positive is uh, there, right? And uh, then uh, what will happen? The current will flow from drain to source. Okay, that's how the basic MOSFET works. I have one question for you. Okay, so to make sure that this uh, the channel is formed, right? We require a very large amount of electrons. To be uh, uh, to be uh, accumulated over uh, this, this particular channel. Okay. From substrate. From substrate. Okay, Yogesh is saying from substrate. Uh, do we have any other answers from anyone? From source. From source. Okay. Hardik is saying from source. Uh, any 
any other answers? Okay, from battery. Okay, everything will come from battery itself. But uh, no, what I I was saying from uh, the transistors, uh, where it, from where it is coming. So I have four places. Okay, actually three places: source, drain, and uh, bulb. Ben is saying minority carrier from body. Bhaskar is saying from source. Okay. How many of you are uh, saying source from source? It is coming. And he, Yes. Okay, Sumant is saying, Hardik Makwana is saying, only two. Okay, and uh, how many of you are saying from uh, bulk it is coming? Okay, one, uh, Thien is saying, Sumant Saha, and uh, yeah, oh my god, so many people. So, uh, the majority is... Uh, is bulk right but the thing is uh, it is not like the majority always wins okay so uh, the the electrons actually comes from source okay so that is the reason why it is called a source it is providing the electrons okay and why i am saying that let me explain you uh, ideally uh, when i say that uh, the inversion is happened and the channel is formed the expectation is the concentration okay the concentration of electrons right in channel okay that should be more than the majority carrier doping majority carrier doping in the substrate okay so uh, let me explain you this majority carrier so it, it is a p type okay so the doping will be around say 10 to the power 16 uh, per centimeter cube okay 10 to the power 16 uh, uh, atoms per centimeter cube now if i want to have 10 to the power 16 uh, electrons per centimeter cube from where i will get the electrons right because this p type minor uh, p type uh, substrate will have only how much right 10 to the power 4 per centimeter cube of electrons right you cannot have 10 to the power 16 uh, electrons per centimeter cube from the substrate right because substrate doesn't contain enough electrons okay which place contains enough electrons it is source and drains okay because these are highly n plus doped and the, the doping over here is 10 to the power 17 to 10 to the power 18 right and it contains highly uh, or it contains the electrons and whenever you apply electric field from here actually this junction okay this pn junction right get forward bias okay and when this junction can get forward bias what happens the electrons start flowing similarly this junction also gets forward bias and the electrons start flowing okay so the answer is uh, the electrons actually comes from the source right and i understand why this confusion is there because the thing is we generally is being taught uh, that okay first uh, you are taught about mos okay so this is my metal this is my oxide and this is my semiconductor right so this, this is mos capacity right and there the inversion is happened actually using uh, the the uh, minority carriers right but please understand uh, to have a significant amount of minority carrier it will take enough time okay very large amount of time to accumulate uh, there and still uh, the concentration won't be enough right and please uh, note this our uh, uh, mosfet works at extremely high frequency okay it, it works in nanoseconds right and uh, when it works in nanoseconds so the trans the electron should come quickly okay and very large amount of electron should come and that is the reason why uh, we have source and drain which is heavily docked with uh, the carriers which is required for the transportation if it is a p mos and mos then the source and drain will be p plus okay it heavily docked with p right and as soon as the gate voltage is applied this junctions will be forward bias and the channel will cre be created right so uh, i hope from next time uh, the the uh, uh, you will have the explanation from where all the electrons are coming in okay any sir, please, sir, sir, please explain again uh, this inversion in uh, NMOS as compared to most transistors because I, we, we always assume that 
be required high, higher threshold voltage to uh, create inversion layer in the case of MOS transistor. But how it is possible here in uh, NMOS transistor? Yeah, can you repeat again once more? Sir, uh, how inversion is different from uh, MOS transistor in comparison to this NMOS transistor? No, no. I am, I, when I talk, this is MOS capacitor. This is not MOS transistor. Okay? This is MOS capacitor. Yeah. It doesn't have source and data. Right. So, you, you are not actually flowing your charge uh, from here to here. Yes, sir. Now, the thing is, when you are want to use it is a transistor right transistor is what transistor yeah. is the switch okay so when i apply voltage it should be turned on when i don't apply voltage it should be turned off right when it is turned on a very high current should flow right for a high current you require very large amount of charge carrier right and this charge carrier actually comes from this source and drain not from the bulb because bulb doesn't have enough charge carrier such that large current can flow Sir, but initially there is a no uh, channel between source and drain, then how they, uh, they, uh, they are flowing between source and drain without inversion layer take place be, uh, no, no, below no. the oxide layer? Okay, so initially it doesn't have, as soon as you apply the gate voltage, as soon as you okay. apply the gate voltage, what will happen, see, this positive, oh, sorry, yeah, this positive voltage will come on the gate, right, and it will come to this particular place right so here uh, this this particular have the positive potential okay and please note that here it is zero okay, okay. so this pn junction which is formed over here okay this will get followed by right because p side is positive n side is negative and then this electrons will start coming from here okay and then uh, this current will start flowing Did I answer your question? No, sir. Could not. I will. I have not understood, sir. Are you are confused. Okay, let me. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, the elect uh, the carriers are coming after applying the VDS or uh, if if there is no VDS, only VGS is there. Then is it possible to come the carriers from the source to the channel? Because actually, whenever we are applying a, a drain to source voltage, then uh, from source terminal, the carriers are generated and they are uh, going through the channel and terminate at the drain. This is actually the logic we are know. Uh, so, my question is that uh, when, suppose there is no VDS, only VGS is there, then is it possible uh, for source to contribute uh, carrier, carriers to the channel? So, as, as you apply the gate voltage, the channel will be formed. Now the, now the question is, if the electron flow or not, right? So the electron will only flow when you apply the VDS. Okay. So the first thing is the channel formation, right? So the channel will be formed. Electrons are there, but the electron won't, won't move. Okay. Electron will be only move, as you rightly said, when the VDS will be applied. Exactly. Then uh, for channel formation, uh, the carriers are given by the substrate or the uh, uh, source? source. Which section? Source. Okay. 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 Sir, but why not? Why not from the drain? Because uh, drain also have a PN junction at the same time. Because we apply only uh, get voltage, na? It actually comes from both. Okay. okay, why are you uh, saying source? Because now electron will start moving from uh, there when you apply the VDS, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the reason I'm saying that, okay, it will come from source and it will go to drain. I'm saying like that, but it, it comes from both the side. Okay. But sir, initially inversion, uh, this take place uh, also through uh, source region or uh, bulk, like in most uh, capacitor? Bulk won't contribute. So please understand, okay, sir. right? If this is N plus, right, as soon as the gate is applied, Right, and suppose both are zero, right? As uh, one of the uh, guy has mentioned, that uh, I have not applied any VDS. Then what will happen? Both the junctions are forward by. So both the junctions are forward by, and from here also electron will come. From here also electron will come, and electron will be here. Okay. Now the thing is, as soon as you apply the drain voltage, as soon as you apply the drain voltage, this, this electron will start moving from here, like that. The channel will start moving. The electrons will start moving and the current will start. See, 
why i am saying that bulk won't contain or uh, bulk won't contribute uh, to the channel formation because please understand the bulk doesn't have enough uh, charged carriers right because the doping of the bulk will be 10 to the power 16 okay if it is p type 10 to the power 16 and you know right and p equal to ni square right this is my my mass section law right so what is the you, uh, order of ni ni is in the order of 10 to the power 10 okay so if I ni square is there, so then it will be on, on the order of 10 to the power 20. And if p is 10 to the power 16, right, the concentration of electrons over this p type will be 10 to the power 4 only. Right. Now the thing is, to uh, make sure that the current flows, you require at least 10 to the power 16 electrons over here, okay, more than 10 to the power 16. Okay. And how does this bulk will contribute to this 10 to the power 16 electron? Because it doesn't have those many carriers over there. Okay, that's the reason we do doping highly from the source and rate such that uh, the, the carriers can come from there. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So you may want to go and rethink of whatever you have learned over the time, right? Uh, please understand this, this confusion I also had initially. I was like, okay, I say he but it is not like that, okay? While uh, understanding the MOSFET physics, and it is uh, um, actually hard to uh, uh, digest initially, why? Right? Because we are taught like that from any book you, uh, uh, you study, it will first uh, show you the MOS cap, and then it will show you the MOS fact. Right, and we will start assuming that okay, electrons are coming from the bulk. It is not like that, okay. So uh, now what we will do, we will move to uh, second question, okay. Uh, I, I just want answer from you guys, okay. Name some reasons why in the BLSI circuits we use MOSFET instead of BJT. Absent of majority or minority carriers. Absent of minority carriers. Okay, how does it will help? In, in what fashion it will help us? Easier fabrication. Okay, I have one answer from Gyokes. Okay, that is correct. Right, so uh, MOSFET is uh, well matured and easy to fabricate as compared to BJT. What about uh, other parameters? <laughs> So, if there are less minority carriers or no minority carriers, what will happen? Okay, no low noise, low power consumption. Yeah, so that's the answer I was actually expecting, right? So, as compared to BJT, uh, MOSFET has lower power consumption. Low noise also, yes, <coughs> because you can get full uh, VDD and full ground as two levels, right? When your MOSFET will act as a switch. What else? Okay, I have so many answers. Low cost. Low cost. When I when you talk about low cost, right? What you are actually trying to say? When do we say that? Okay, our uh, uh, digital circuit, whatever you are designing, is low cost. Okay. Do you want to answer that? Okay, so whenever I say that, okay, anything is low cost, it means uh, two things, okay? The fabrication is uh, easier, okay? So that's already been said. The second thing is area, okay? It takes lesser area as compared to BJT, right? So uh, low cost means low area or lesser area. Anything else? I think high performance is the other thing I have written over here. Okay, so yeah, regarding any leakage current or so yeah? Yeah, low power. Leakage, leakage current, leakage current. This a leakage that, that is a, one issue in BJT. Reverse saturation current. Yeah. So uh, when you are saying that uh, there is a leakage, actually it is uh, been absorbed over here. It takes low power. Okay. So, uh, all the uh, leakage component actually contributes to one of the power consumption that is called as static power. 
Yes, so that's an excellent point. Scaling is actually uh, possible in easier manner as compared to BJT in MOSFET. Okay, and because of that, right, we have uh, progressed from one micrometer to say five nanometer. Right, every year we are we are coming with new technology because MOSFET provides us that. Uh, it is hard to scale BJ to to such such small dimension. So that's uh, the other thing. I think we have uh, enough points. So okay, this is well and good. Now moving to the third question: What happens if BDS is increased over saturation? BDS is the drain to source voltage I am talking about. And uh, if I have I have achieved the saturation, right? So what is the condition of saturation? Anybody wants to tell me for a MOSFET? When VDS is equal to VGS minus VT, VDS is equal then to VGS minus minus VT, right? Then, then so saturation this is the take point of saturation. Now, what happens if VDS is greater than VGS minus VT? Then current is start is stop to increasing. Current will stop increasing. Okay. Anything else will happen? The pinch of occurs at that point. Pinch of occurs. Okay. Do you want to explain pinch of? So this, this is that is uh, channel is narrowing in the uh, drain end because at uh, if if it is increased VGS minus uh, VT, then uh, obviously uh, gate to drain voltage is there VGD. So that is actually reversing the case, not the forward reversing. So that's why. Uh, the channel are uh, actually channel is uh, uh, close tapping tapping at that at that side. So let me explain what uh, I was saying. Uh, so this, this is my, Now the thing is, uh, RDL uh, is uh, VTH, is greater than VTH. Okay, if uh, VGS is greater than VTH, okay, and VDS is less than or equal to VGS minus VTH, okay, so the current will flow. But the thing is, if we, uh, if you reach VDS is equal to VGS minus VTH, right? At that point, the channel actually becomes like this. Okay, the channel, the channel actually tapers down like this. Okay, and after that, even if you apply more VDS, the current actually stop increasing. Okay, so if I plot ID versus VDS, okay, this is what we call as output characteristic. So the ideal thing is it should be like this. Okay, so it will remain it will become constant after your VDS is greater than VGS minus VT. Right? So uh, this is what happens if uh, VDS is increased over saturation. But the thing is, is it really the case? Is it uh, the case that uh, this this actually uh, becomes constant? So that come to uh, the fourth question. What do you understand by uh, channel length modulation? Anybody wants to answer that? Yes, sir. Channel length is reduced when we increase the VDS. Uh, then what happened? Depletion layer near the drain region is increased. That's why effective channel length is reduced. Due to uh, decrease in effective channel length, uh, we have an increase in the our uh, saturation current ID also. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So that's the answer I was expecting. So what happens? Right. Uh, if you keep on increasing uh, your VDS, what happens that uh, the tapering actually now uh, start moving left, leftward, right? And because of that, the effective channel length is which was uh, full L in the earlier case. Now it becomes L minus delta. Okay. Now you understand, right? The, the current equation is what? The current equation is uh, beta. In the saturation region, okay, VGS minus VT whole square, right? Where beta is mu n CEOX W by L, 
okay so it is beta by 2 actually so mu and shade w by l and if l reduces if l reduces beta will increase if beta increases then the current will increase right so the thing is if you see the actual output characteristic it, it happens like this okay so current actually doesn't remain constant it, it now uh, increases uh, linearly okay so in, initially it increases exponentially then ideally it should be remaining at constant but there is a, a linear increase okay with the vds which we don't want actually which we don't want but it happens right because of the whatever phenomena we have discussed so uh, i hope it is clear with everybody okay moving to uh, uh, the last part of the basic questions okay then we have uh, some more questions over there what are the various factors that can affect the threshold voltage so uh, can anybody tell me what is threshold voltage in terms of MOSFET? Minimum voltage required to flow the current through the uh, transistor uh, is called threshold voltage or we can say moment of uh, charge uh, from source to drain uh, occurs when we have a voltage, minimum voltage VT is reached. Okay, okay. So, uh what uh, you are saying is, is the minimum voltage, minimum voltage to make the current flow. Okay. Any other answer do we have? So minimum actually is minimum the minimum voltage that helps to create the inversion layer. Minimum voltage that helps to create. Okay, voltage required to invert the channel. Yeah. yeah. Any other answer do we have? Minimum voltage means minimum gate to source voltage, right? Minimum VGS. Okay, so uh, the question is when do we say that our channel is inverted? Okay, so I think I have already discussed in uh, one of the questions, but. Uh, when do we say that our channel is inverted? So this is my MOSFET. Okay. I will just make. So the definitions are good, but the question is okay, when it is inverted? Okay. Drain, this is source, this is gate. Okay, this is my bulk, this is my P type. This is MOS, okay. N plus, N plus. Okay. Uh, when P type P type convert to N type. The, the uh, convert to n type just below the surface region. Yeah. Just below the surface. Yeah. Do we have any other answer? Uh, do we have any other answer? Okay, so this answer is slightly correct. Uh, I, ju I just want to give you the exact correct answer. So if your P type, uh, P type means uh, the bulk, okay, the bulk doping that is my NB is NB, right? And so the channel, the, the concentration of uh, the concentration of electrons in the channel, okay, if I say that is NC, Right. When NB is equal to NC, right, this is the point we call uh, that, okay, our inversion has happened. It means that you apply the gate voltage, you remove all the positive charge carriers from here, and then you make this uh, region filled with electrons, the negative charge carrier, but the concentration should be that much, uh, that high as compared to the bulk, okay? So this particular point is called as inversion. Now the question is, what are the factors that will affect the threshold voltage, right? So you have said that this is the minimum voltage that is required to create the inversion layer or make the current flow, right? What are the factors uh, which will affect the threshold voltage? That is the question. Okay, very standard interview question. Doping, uh, doping profile of most uh, uh, substrate and also the uh, source and drain 
trap charges available in the oxide and uh, uh, soft to bulk voltage uh, soft to bulk voltage vsb okay what else uh, yeah uh, length of the channel thickness of the oxy layer oxide thickness okay. what else um, oxide material that is uh, epsilon ox oxide See, we have so many answers. Now I will be asking why it will affect and how does it will affect. Okay, one by one. So uh, the very first will be uh, the doping. Okay, doping of bulk. Okay. Now the question is, if I increase the doping of the bulk, what will happen? The threshold voltage will increase or decrease, and why? Increase, sir. Uh, because we have to uh, reach nb equal to nc we require more voltage right now you understand right how this expression is helpful yes so, sir yeah so you will require more charge carriers right because your bulk is now having more charge carriers right and you require more gate voltage to achieve to uh, inverse and okay so if you increase n uh, so um, nb right so vt will also increase Right? and vice versa now the second is uh, what do we have trap charges okay very interesting i think this one so who has answered trap charges and how does it will impact so much okay me sir yeah how does it will impact if we have more trap charges than or do we have to have some more information so the that voltage also included uh, in the uh, uh, bgs if we have it, um, that much voltage then uh, we can have a inversion take place inversion. for example trap charges required 0.2 volt then this 0.2 volt also increase uh, increase to threshold voltage 0.2 volt will also increase to threshold voltage okay so do you know what trap charges are Uh, these are introduced during the uh, 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 oxidation process itself. Okay, and these are the charges you don't want, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me explain uh, this for everyone. Okay. So what he is trying to say that okay, if this is my gate and this is my oxide, okay, I'm making a big oxide, and then uh, what I have is like this, right? Now. If uh, our process, fabrication process, or whatever, whatever oxidation, right? If it is, it is perfect, right? So it will be nothing but only SiO2, silicon dioxide. Okay. So this is I am talking about, uh, say, 65 nanometer technology where it is silicon dioxide, right? And everything else is silicon. Okay. So, but the thing is, it is not perfect, right? So there, there are, there can be some charges which are introduced. Okay. Now it can be positive charges, okay? Positive charges which are introduced like this, right? Now the question is: This is an N MOS, okay? This is an N MOS where this is N plus, this is N plus, okay? This is P, right? And this is my gate, okay? And this is my VG, right? If positive charges are introduced. What will happen to my threshold voltage? Will it increase or decrease in case of MOS? Increase, sir. Threshold voltage will increase. Okay. Why are you saying so? Because, sir, we apply uh, uh, positive gate voltage, so we have to we have a uh, uh, at the interface of surface we require negative charge carrier. Yes. But uh, this uh, to remove this positive charge carrier, we require more VG. So that's why we require. No, 
these are fixed charges okay this cannot be moved so yeah this cannot be moved but to overcome the effect of this positive charge carrier we require more uh, vg okay my question is why do you want to overcome right because you are anyway applying positive charges right and these 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 are going to help you why do you want to overcome because the uh, we require ne negative charge at the uh, at the surface of oxide na yes right yes. not not a, yeah at this surface you require negative right yeah this surface you require electrons see if i already have positive charges this will already attract from some electrons over here right and then you apply some gate voltage right which will also attract electrons so this is helping you this is not opposing you rather it is helping you because you are anyway applying positive right and there are some positive charges already there in the oxide not in the bar in the oxide right which will help you to create the channel so the threshold voltage will reduce not increase do you agree yeah yes sir yes sir everybody agrees i need at least one yes from anyone okay sangeeta is saying yes what about other okay yeah i have at least two yes okay now i i will tell uh, what will happen if i have negative over here okay so if i have electrons or uh, negative charges not electrons negative charges minus okay now if you have negative charges it will be the thing is first whatever positive voltage you will apply it will be cancelled by some of these negative charges right because these negative charges are already repelling electrons from here right it is not attracting the electrons rather it is repelling the electrons okay so if you want to have same number of charge carriers over here you have to apply more voltage right because to counter the effect of these electrons so in this case you have to counter the effect so if you have negative charge carriers in the oxide in the case of nmos then your threshold voltage will increase okay if you have positive uh, charge carrier in the oxide in the case of nmos then your threshold voltage will decrease right i hope uh, this this concept is clear to everybody okay i'm hoping that right so uh, we uh, we have covered two points i think the trap and the doping now uh, we are going to say length of uh, now length will be uh, a bit complex so we will come back to length oxide thickness okay how the threshold voltage is being impacted by oxide thickness anyone want to answer <clears throat> uh yogesh rivastav is this the phenomena used in flash memory okay slightly yes uh, but uh, yeah there you apply extremely high electric field right to uh, uh, pull the charge in the oxide okay so you can go to my website i have a very detailed uh, uh, presentation on the flash memory if you want to understand that okay so uh, i have actually presented that flash memory at iit gandhinagar i have uh, that on uh, the website but i think in one of the tutorial <laughs> i'll be explaining what kind of memory technology we will have and i'll be explaining flash memory over there and how this phenomena actually helps us there okay so uh, the question was uh, what will happen if uh, uh, the oxide thickness uh, okay i will provide the link at the end of this so everybody uh, please uh, be please stay till the end okay i will share youtube links i will share uh, uh the my website link where you can find some some materials right and some tips and tricks uh to uh proceed ahead in the lsi uh, design industry okay question yeah but before that you have to answer my question okay so what will happen uh, uh if you reduce the oxide thickness or increase the oxide thickness so first let us ask reduce the oxide thickness what will happen to the threshold voltage actually uh, oxide is uh, working like a insulator so if we uh, decrease the oxide thickness then obviously the uh, electric field that is vgs that is gate voltage electric field will penetrate 
will uh, uh, applying the low voltage then the field the effect of the field will come to the channel if we uh, reduce the oxide thickness and if we increase the thickness then definitely uh, the strength of the field will be required more then voltage will be required more so, you're so what you are saying that yes yes Concluding is that uh, if we reduce the oxide thickness, then uh, the uh, then the threshold voltage may be reduced. It is it is reduced. Threshold voltage is reducing. Okay, I have I think one comment from longitudinal field increases with the reduced weakness. Okay, field will increase. Okay, uh, so uh, the thing is, it is actually not insulated. Rather, what we call this as dielectric. Okay, so. Uh, <coughs> Electric field at least uh, passes through the electric. Now the thing is, uh, in this particular uh, metal oxide semiconductor, this dielectric, uh, so when you apply, uh, will act as a what we call as capacitor. Okay, so if you reduce the thickness of the capacitor, the capacitance increases, right? So you can have lesser, uh, uh, or what do you say? Right, more charge carrier in the same voltage. Right, so whatever you are saying is actually correct. Right, if you reduce the oxide thickness, right, you can apply lesser voltage to get the same number of charge carriers. Okay, so VTH reduces with oxide thickness reducing. Okay, and VTH increases as you increase the oxide thickness. Okay, now uh, we have oxide material. Okay, so I will answer this easily. Uh, if you uh, change the oxide material, it can increase or reduce the threshold voltage. How does it will change? So if you have a uh, oxide material with higher permittivity, right, higher epsilon, right, then your threshold voltage will reduce. Okay, if you have uh, oxide material with lesser permittivity, lesser epsilon, then your threshold voltage will increase, right. So that's the answer. Now uh, we have two things. One is body bias, and uh, what is another? Length of uh, the uh, length of the channel. Okay. So understanding this uh, is a bit uh, complex. So what I will do? I will uh, in the next class I will show you the exact waveform. Okay. How does uh, your uh, threshold voltage changes with length and body bias? Body bias is simple, right? I think body wise everybody can answer how it will change with length, right? Uh, I will just show you the VTH actually changes like this. Okay, so VTH actually changes like this. So it actually initially increases and then it reduces and it, then it becomes constant. It, the the uh, phenomena is like this: VTH versus uh, your uh, what do we have length? Okay, so reducing everybody knows. But it actually initially increases and then reduces, right? Why this? We will be discussing in following lectures, okay? But please note that this is the time. So, uh, how much time do we have? So, we have 26 minutes. We will quickly solve five more problems and then we will have a, a discussion. The very first thing, uh, I think, uh, for a PMOS transistor with Vt equal to minus 0.3 volt, the inversion revision is defined for the following configuration, right? So actually the question which we wanted to ask over here is what is the inversion region, right? And how does VT impact it? I think we have discussed this already, right? So we will move to the second part, which is a numerical one. And uh, if you uh, see, have seen the uh, class lectures, right? We have solved one of this kind of problem. Okay, so uh, let us solve uh, this problem quickly uh, if this kind of question comes, right? So uh, the question is, what is the beta value for an NMOS transistor for W by L ratio 8 by 4? So uh, the question is, what is beta? So beta we have to find. So uh, the formula of beta is mu n C O X W by L. Okay, so this is the formula of beta. What is given in the question? W by L is given as 8 by 2. Okay, 
then uh, what is yes. Uh, actually, when we are solving this question, uh, the answer is not matched with the answer that is given. This is the question number three yes, of the assignment. Yes, assignment one. Uh, this is only match when uh, W by L ratio is four. Four, I think. Two. W by L ratio is two. Two. Then only it is matched with the one of the option. This is I think one point two eight. This one. But Otherwise, L is different, sir. If we solve in that way, eight by two, that time it is not match with the given answer. So what to do now? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I have not seen uh, the actual question. Is it the same question that you asked? Yeah, same, same not, question. Not, not same, sir. Not uh, this is two sixty by sixty. No, that is if you if you ratio this, it will be like that four. This is also four. It is also four. Yes, sir. This is sir. Yeah, yeah. What we have to do is uh, we have to calculate beta. So this will be eighty multiplied by C O X. This will be three point two eight nine multiplied by ten to the power minus six into W by L is nine four, right? So four. Ten point five two four. Ten point five two. Five two. Ha ha ha! My cramp here. Right. This is the answer you are getting. Ha! Actually, but it is not match with the given no, given option. This is not the option. So no. Can you write in the discussion for that? Uh, okay. So okay, this was very easy. Okay. So very easy question. Now uh, this is uh, another question, and I think this is also very easy because uh, the formula has already been given in the class. Okay, so I will just use the formula, and uh, I will try to uh, answer this. So this is. VDS saturation uh, you have to find out. Okay, this formula is VC into VGS minus VT multiplied by VGS minus VT plus VC. Okay. Right? So everybody agrees with this formula. Anybody want to tell me how do we get this particular formula? Anyone? The short channel effect. 
फास्ट जाने लगा फिर I will just put the values. Uh, we see uh, there is one minus zero point three. Okay, so uh, VGS again four to zero. Okay, so VGS okay. VGS is given one. Then minus zero point three VT plus one point zero four. Okay, so this will be one point zero four multiplied by zero point seven minus. Uh, One minus point three will be point uh, seven plus one point zero four and seven plus one point zero four. So let me just put into the calculator. Uh, okay, so this will come around point four one eight. Is this correct? Yes, yes. Is the question. Okay, so this is question number three. Uh, yeah. A simple question again, right? In short channel current model, what is the effective mobility? So everybody uh, know the formula, right? Uh, or uh, do you remember the formula? What it was? The formula of effective mobility. I think Professor Madhav has derived that, or I think he has discussed this in the class. Anybody remembers? Anybody? So the formula of mu effective. So in this case, this MOSFET it is M MOS. Okay, and what it was? Speed. So this was ninety-five point seven centimeters square per volt. Ideally, it is eighty centimeters square per volt. Ideally, only for uh, mu effective mobility for. Uh, electron is empty, and for hole is put uh, just double. Oh, that is fine, right? So that is for yeah. I think you are telling for sixty-five nanometer, which is quite high. Yeah. But this question, uh, we have pro provided with some value. Okay, VG is equal to zero point five. Okay, so VG mm -hmm. is equal to zero point three zero, and TOX. I have not written the TOX here. So this has been discussed. Right, so this is the formula which has been there. And if you put uh, everything, all the values, right, uh, the value you will get over here is 50.31 centimeters square per volt second, around 50 for this particular size. Okay, so this is the mobility of the electron. Right, and in a uh, lecture, uh, one of the thing has been mentioned in the 65 nanometer. Uh, I think uh, the mobility uh, that was shown was 40 centimeters square per volt second. That was from the technology itself, and uh, that was for what? That was for PMOS, right? And for NMOS, it was 80 centimeters square per volt. Second. So there was one by two ratio. Yes. Right. 
So it means that electron mobility is higher as compared to hole mobility in uh, at least 65 nanometer technology when we are talking about. Okay. See, as you change the technology, this uh, ratio may change. Okay. So we work with 28 nanometer technology here at IoT. And in that particular case, the ratio is 1.5. Okay. Mu P divided by so mu N divided by mu. Okay. So uh, this is uh, decided on how do you fabricate your transistor and what kind of optimization you have done to Okay. So we are only left with uh, one question. Okay. So this question. Is this question is also a part of assignment? No, sir. Then uh the first assignment. It is not given in the first assignment. So anybody, uh, so see, the question is what? The question is find the region of the operation of P1 and N1, right? So this is one transistor. This is the second transistor, okay? And we have been provided all sorts of value. We have VDD equal to 3 volt. We have VT uh, 0.4, VTP is equal to minus 0.4, WP, WN equal to 360 nanometer, and all sorts of value we have. Uh, now the question is, how do we approach this question? Anybody wants to help me? Okay, how do we approach this question? I have this question and I want to approach. I want to find out uh, the uh, region of N1. Okay, we will start with them and B, I think you can, uh, you can figure out, okay, so I will share the link of uh, my YouTube channel and then they, from there, uh, what you can do, you can download the slides and you can start solving, but anybody wants to help me? Okay, so let's see N1, okay, let's see N1. There is actually no real way by how uh, we should approach this question. So then uh, we will start with N1. And let us assume that N1 is in linear region. Okay, N1 is in linear region. Right. I hope everybody remembers this uh, uh, PMI, I think, uh, uh, mathematical induction, right? We read in class 12, right? Where we assume something and then we try to prove the hypothesis. Okay, we will uh, use the same concept over here. We assume that N1 is in linear reason. So if N1 is in linear reason, right, the question is, uh, uh, what will be my current? What will be the current through this N1 transistor? Does anybody want to help me? What is the current equation in the linear region? Current equation in the linear region, anyone? Half K dash N W by L. Okay. Half K dash N W by L. Uh, v D S into V G S minus V T minus V D S by two. V D S square by two. V D S square by two. V D S square by two. So let's see. Okay, let's see. So if uh, please tell me if I am correct or wrong. Yes, by two into V. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, so this is the equation. Now, see, VDS is what? VDS is V two over here, right? For N one, because source is zero. So VDS is V two. Everybody agrees. Everybody agrees. Yes, sir. Yes. Now the thing is, what I will do, I will try to find out V2 using KCL, okay? So if I see, the same I current will also flow through R1 because it's in series, right? R1 and N1 is series. So uh, I can write another equation that is, so V2 is equal to PDD minus I into R1. This I can write, right? So, VDD minus I into R1, whatever the voltage drop that has occurred in the R1. So, 
from here I have one equation of V2. So now what I will do? So I will find out first beta. Okay, beta is mu n uh, cox uh, w by L. okay. So everything is n. Okay. So if I see, so mu n cox is uh, 200, 200, and then I have uh, w by L that is 360 by 180. Okay. So that is into two. Okay. And that will be my uh, microamp here per volt square. Okay. So this will be 0.4 milliampere per volt square. Okay. Beta is calculated. Now uh, what I have to do, I have to find out current. So current will be 0 0.4. Okay. What is VGS? So VGS is given for N1 is 2.4. VGS <coughs> is is 0. So VGS is 2.4, so 2.4, then minus uh, VT, so VT is how much, it is 0.4, okay, so here you can see VT is given as 0.4, then uh, VGS minus VT minus VDS, right, VDS is what, VDS is V2 only, okay, V2 by 2 into V2, okay. So uh, this is the other equation I uh, get. So this will be how much? 0 0.4, 2 minus V2 by 2 into V2. Okay. And uh, I have uh, the equation of V2 over here, VDT minus I into R1. Okay. What I can do? I can uh, uh, substitute the value of I, right? VDT and R1 I already have. And I can get the final answer of what? I can get uh, V2 from there, right? So if I uh, calculate V2, that will be my uh, what? That will be uh, the VDS I will get. And please note why we are calculating VDS, you will quickly understand now, okay? So I will try to uh, uh, solve this. So this will be uh, V2, V2 is equal to VDD minus I is how much? 0 0.4, 2 minus V2 by 2 into V2, right? Into Okay, so in 2R1, so this will be the uh, equation. So this will be how much? VDD is 3 minus, uh, so see, 2 I have used uh, over, over both. So this will be 2, this will be 4 minus V2 uh, into V2 into R1 is how much? R1 is 1 kilo ohm. Okay, so uh, R1 is 1. So uh, if I calculate everything, uh, my V2 equation will be, because I have already solved, uh, you can just verify. So the equation will be like this, okay, V2 square minus 9 V2 plus 15 is equal to 0, okay. <laughs> Right, then uh, what will happen? The, the minus b plus minus and uh, b square minus 4 is here point two way. The two value you will get is 2.9209. Okay, the another one you will get is 6.791. Okay, two value I am getting. So, which value to take? Anybody wants to tell me? There are two values which I am getting. I have done nothing, right? I just substituted uh, two equation. I've calculated V2, right? You can just confirm this by solving yourself. The thing is, which value I should take? Because this is, uh, VDD is already three, so we cannot proceed beyond that. Excellent, right? So cannot be greater than VDD, okay? It, it cannot be greater than VDD, right? V2 should be always less than or equal to VDD. Okay, so, so V2 in our case will be 2.204, okay, so uh, I have to add one more page, just one minute. <laughs> right, now what assumption we have taken? We have taken assumption that uh, my uh, N1 is in linear region, okay. 
and with that assumption v2 is coming as 2.204 right now the thing is we have to verify if our assumption is correct or not right so how do we verify we just check the equation right for transistor to be in linear region vds okay should be less than vgs minus vt right so uh, vgs is how much 2.4 vt is 0.4 and vds is 2.2 okay so 2.2 is actually not less than t right so whatever assumption we have taken is actually incorrect right so n1 is in, n1 is not in linear region the answer is n1 is in saturation region n1 is in saturation region but again right we cannot directly say that we have to verify so if n1 is in saturation region what should be uh, the current equation current equation should be i equal to beta by 2 vgs minus uh, vt square okay beta we have already calculated i think so uh, this is 0.4 beta is 0.4 0.4 by 2 and 2.4 minus uh, 0.4 square okay so 0.4 by 2 okay into uh, 4 so this will be uh, 2 this will be 0.8 milliampere okay so unit is milliampere over here uh, please take care of the unit while uh, you are doing the calculation Uh, I have already done once before uh, coming to this lecture, so I am confident. But uh, yeah, you should also see if things are correct or not. So uh, I is uh, 0.8 milliampere. Okay. So if I is 0.8 milliampere, again we will go to that equation. VDD is uh, how much? V, uh, v sorry, not VDD. V2 is uh, VDD minus I into R1. I think you remember this equation. So we will write V2 is equal to 3 minus I is 0.8, right? Milli multiplied by R1 k. So milli multiplied by k it will be cancelled out. So 3 minus 0.8 this will be 2.2. Okay. Now uh, in this case our VD or V2 is coming 2.2. Then now we will check the condition. Okay. If VDS is greater than uh, VGS minus VT, okay, greater than zero. Right, so VDS is 2.2, and VGS minus VT is how much? Right, 2.4 minus uh, 0.4. So 2.2 is greater than 2. Okay, it means our N1 transistor is in saturation region. Okay, so uh, if you know the circuit parameters, you can uh, by hand calculation you can find out which your transistor is in which region. Right. So if I go back to the circuit, right? so N1 is in saturation region. Uh, the question for the homework for you guys is uh, what is the region of my P1? Okay, this calculation was simple, right? Just uh, it was long, but it was I think uh, fairly simple. Right? Okay, so uh, I will again go to this. Okay, so we are done with this part. So uh, this is the link of the WhatsApp group. Okay, so you may want to scan this, or I will upload uh, this uh, into uh, uh, into the classroom. Uh, not the classroom. Uh, what do we have? The YouTube link, right? Uh, this link I can add over there, and uh, I will just share the YouTube link with you guys. Okay, so let me just share the YouTube link. from next uh, lecture onward we will practice lot of questions okay this will help you in understanding vlsi and i will try to give you some more uh, research topics research discussions we will have right two hours is a very long time we have okay so this is the youtube link uh, currently it contains uh, the digital circuit lectures which i have taken last semester right if you, okay, want, if you want to go to digital circuit lectures, you can go i think somebody is uh, unmuted Raju Patel. So uh, okay, so there I have solved a lot of digital circuits question, right? If you want to uh, revise uh, that uh, lecture series is from Professor Santanu uh, Santanu from IIT Kharagpur, 
and a uh, lot of gate related questions also I have solved. And I will use this channel. I will create another playlist for VLSI. I will just upload this after uh, the class is over. Okay. And uh, my website, I will just share with you guys. Uh, you may want to uh, go to my website. Couple of things I have in my website. Uh, there are uh, Python tutorials which are available. Okay. There are very log slides which are available. And I think uh, there are a uh, couple of more slides like one flash memory, new things we have over there. So you can uh, visit uh, the website. For uh, the YouTube channel, you should subscribe obviously so that you, you get a notification. Uh, just like I, now I am a YouTuber also, right? So, uh, and uh, if you have any questions, anything, you can write to this e email ID, okay? Kailash.prasad at IIT Gandhinagar, IITGN.ac.in. Please note it down. Uh, and uh, this uh, WhatsApp group, I think I will share the link, right? So from image, it is hard for you guys. I will share the link over here. So please join the WhatsApp group. And uh, yeah, I think the best thing is you can, uh, sorry, we can uh, drop into this uh, WhatsApp group all the queries. Okay, so this is the link. Uh, to join the WhatsApp group. And uh, if you want any kind of uh, uh, answers or questions answered from VLSI, right, you can ask. You don't ask the questions of uh, assignment till the deadline is over. Right? If you have doubts, you can ask. You cannot ask the answers over there, right? And uh, yeah, please follow the honor code, okay? So you do your assignment uh, faithfully because you are here for learning, right? So that you should do. If you want any kind of uh, uh, suggestions regarding career, right? How do you build uh, your career in VLSI? What kind of skill sets you want to acquire? Okay. Uh, I am the right guy to help you in that regards. I've been uh, working with the industry professionals for last three, four years. And along with that, I have humongous uh, friend circle in the VLSI industry. My students are there in VLSI industry. The people who I work with are there in VLSI industry. So I will, I can help you in that regards. And maybe, uh, yeah, after six months, I will be also part of VLSI industry. Okay. So I will stop the recording. Uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, joining this session. I hope you will join all the sessions in the uh, in for uh, this VLSI 